Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples, and today I have this bird stalking me from a very close distance. He's staring right at me. He's opening his beak menacingly, and uh, I'm a little bit troubled by what I see, but hopefully uh, he's just hanging out. He's not going to do anything untoward, and we'll just have to keep an eye on him. Let's see if I can zoom this thing back. Uh, as long as he doesn't call on his friends, we're going to be good. Okay, here we have a 1990 Mercedes-Benz 300 SE sedan. Now, if you were going to ask me what my favorite car is, and I get asked that all the time, and frankly, it's a little bit of a ridiculous question. It's like asking Keith Richards who his favorite groupie was. I mean, you know, there's just so many to choose from, and all are good or bad or fantastic in their own way. But if, if I had to narrow it down, if I had to come up with one car that, you know, I, I'm on a desert island, you know, as they say the ridiculous thing, yeah, you can drive one car for the rest of your life, although on a desert island you probably won't be doing much driving. Uh, this would probably be it, and that is the facelifted version of the W126 sedan in 300 SE trim. Uh, that means it's powered by an inline six cylinder. It's got the short wheelbase, which is about six inches uh, shorter than the long wheelbase, six inch uh, less doors on the, on the rear. Uh, it's much more nimble. It uh, doesn't handle and park like the Queen Mary. While it still retains virtually everything that makes this an S-Class, uh, which is uh, German for special class, their top of the line, their true luxury car. And in fact, during this time period, one could argue, and I think one could argue very convincingly, that this was the last great Mercedes. Look at that leaf. And that came right down. Well, at least it's not a fly. Anyway, one could argue that this was the last great Mercedes. Now, I know the W124, the E-Class sedan, went uh, beyond this one and had virtually the same build quality and materials. But it's not an S-Class, and this is. And, you know, the 140 came out after this one. They put about a billion dollars worth of research into that. Uh, but they did find ways to make it, uh, you know, more attainable. They decontented it. This car was the ultimate sort of pinnacle from when Mercedes-Benz, the uh, engineers all ran the company, the accountants were locked in a little cell in the basement and let out only very rarely. And the over-engineering that went into this car, including the simplicity, is absolutely fantastic. I've got something flashing at me here. I'm going to have to see what's going on. Okay, so the camera is running out of steam there. Doesn't matter, gonna keep going. So anyway, they locked the engineers, sorry, they locked the accountants in the basement. Uh, you know, down the road, Mercedes-Benz wanted to become more like Volkswagen, this big global company that could sell tons and tons of cars from uh, even small economy cars all the way up to, of course, fantastic luxury cars, which they do. But they lost some of the soul that they had when this car was built. Uh, this was designed and meant to be the best-selling luxury car in the world, the best prestige auto in the world. And they put a lot of thought and time into making that happen. And it worked very, very well. Uh, you know, this car was very synonymous, synonymous, synonymous with wealth and prestige in the 19th 1980s. And even in this 300 SE form, which was the uh, entry-level S-Class, you're still talking about a car that cost north of $50,000 in the late, uh, late 80s. In 1990, this thing would have been up near 60, which is frankly a ton of money. So we're not talking about a cheap vehicle. Uh, it's a star of movies. It's a star of uh, TV shows. Uh, it was widely used in the diplomatic community. In fact, uh, if you look at a lot of uh, you know, embassies today, there's a strong chance you're going to see an old 126 still sitting outside somewhere. Uh, it just looks regal. It's uh, designed by Bruno Sacco. He was the head engineer or head designer on the project. Uh, truly one of his absolute masterpieces. It was meant to be more aerodynamic, more efficient, more fuel efficient than the uh, prior S-Classes, and they did pull that off. You know, compared to big American luxury sedans at the time, this thing was really uh, just a gas sipper. Uh, the styling, a beautiful, subtle German, lovely creased body lines everywhere. Uh, you know, not trying to go in your face, just absolutely gorgeous design. Now, the sun's coming out. I got too late to start here, so I'm going to pause again for a minute, put it behind the tree over there so we can keep going. Yeah, I'll tell you, sun is an absolute enemy of this filming. It just makes everything look crappy. 
Uh, anyway, the lines on this car, the stateliness of it, the poise of it, the angles, the design, just gorgeous to look at and why it really is becoming a much sought after classic today. And they, you know, they weren't uh, skimpy with how many they built. A bunch of these things got sold, but unfortunately, very few remain in the condition that this one is in. Uh, you know, you can find a bunch of junk out there, but it's tough to find one that was, you know, originally owned or second owner, someone who looked after it, someone who kept it in indoors, you know, garaged and, and loved on. And when you find one, you better snap it up because they're getting harder to come by. All right, let's start inside the trunk. All right, back here, a nice, big, proper trunk. Very, very spacious. Uh, you know, nice finishing, but not more than it needs. Again, these are engineers putting this thing together. Uh, if you lift up this carpet here, lift up this guy, you see the original spare tire, the original bag of tools, a little uh, ground jack over there, everything nice. Uh, you see that yellow and black tube run into a styrofoam covered thing. Uh, that is a vacuum pump on this car. Much of what this car does runs on vacuum. The door locks and uh, of course a, a ton of stuff under the hood. So uh, that is designed to create vacuum to move the locks up and down. It's one of the things I really like about this car that makes it unique to the world. If I can find the keys I'll show you. Okay so when I lock it uh, now watch the uh, difference between the front and the rear. Uh, in a car that has electric locks, you lock this thing, all four go down almost simultaneously. On this car, bam, a little bit of a delay. Uh, you hear it while the vacuum kicks in and, and pops up. So it's kind of cool the way that happens. Uh, definitely unique to Mercedes-Benz. I'll show you under the hood. That is just the most elegant beauty line in the hood of this car. Okay, so this I believe is the M103 motor, maybe 102, my memory doesn't serve. Inline six cylinder, single overhead cam, very, very simple. Uh, you can see all the white coating on that exhaust, uh, uh, we'll call it a header, although it does have a bit of a header look to it, but we'll call it the manifold. Anyway, that is a factory rust proofing that is usually gone and rusted away. So uh, I don't know if they just had a good day at the rust proofing plant or this thing has led such a soft life uh, that uh, it is just uh, incredibly well preserved. And it is, it's very interesting to see that much factory coating on it. Uh, very common for the paint to be flaking off the valve cover a little bit, but uh, all in all, this is just a fantastic condition for this terrific Mercedes engine. Absolutely bulletproof. Uh, you can see things like the double firewall. This is all safety innovations that Mercedes came up with and what makes this thing so over-engineered and expensive. Uh, but absolutely beautiful stuff under the hood of this car. Uh, very early to have ABS, very early to have airbags. Uh, it came out with seatbelt pretension Mercedes does a lot of safety innovations, and uh, they have never enforced a safety patent, which I guess makes them pretty good people in their own way. All right, look at that. I'm putting fingerprints in it. If I do a murder, they're going to be able to get that. Uh, you can see that beautiful uh, traditional grill on the car with the uh, three-pointed star leading the way. Uh, that uh, stands for Mercedes dominance on land, sea, and air. You have one prong pointing at each. Uh, they retained these incredibly cool uh, headlight washers and wipers. Uh, you know, that's sort of for their maybe their Middle Eastern customers. So if you're zinging this thing at 130 through the desert, you're kicking up storm, uh, you know, dust storm, the headlights get uh, coated, then uh, you can, uh, you know, hit the washers and it'll clean off your headlights. Uh, <clears throat> that said, they only do work when the lights are on. So if you're testing them, there you go. Uh, in 86, they gave this car a, uh, what they call a facelift or a redesign. They went from these bunt cake alloy wheels to these aero alloy wheels, which look much better and were an inch bigger in diameter. Uh, this one, for some reason, has really ridiculous looking valve stems. Uh, it's like the uh, valve stem version of Long Dong Silver there. Don't know why they went on like that. Maybe the guy wanted them to uh, get easy access, but either way, there they are. Uh, nice set of old Michelins on this thing. And uh, you can just tell it was looked after. Uh, also, the body cladding changed uh, back in 86 and carried through. You can see it became smooth. It's an eggshell uh, finish. I, I like the cars that 
contrast, but I like the cars that don't contrast a little bit better. And this is one of those. It's got the midnight blue up top and the uh, matching, you know, eggshell blue on the cladding beneath. The trim around the windows. You got the chrome strip on the top. You've got the frame chrome. You know, it's little subtle details like this that just make these cars so cool to me. Uh, the taillights are even kind of special. You can see the way they're uh, notched in. You've got um, a sort of a weird, you know, why does it do that? Well, again, more cleverness from the Mercedes engineers. Uh, if the car's covered in dust, covered in mud, you know, you've again been driving it through the Sahara at high speeds, uh, all this is going to be covered up, except you're still going to be able to get taillight vision from in here where the dust can't get to. So uh, very crafty uh, engineering on the taillights even. And just those little details are what makes the car cool. Uh, the package shelf in the back you can see is in fantastic shape. Maybe you can't through the glare, but it is. Sometimes that gets sunbaked and cranked up and just nasty looking. Uh, the recessed door handles, another kind of safety and design feature, very, very nice. And uh, I don't know, just love these damn things. I even like that, uh, you know, 80s style uh, cell phone antenna. I decided to keep that on the car. It'd be easy to pull off, but I don't know, kind of like it. It reminds me of Miami Vice or something. Okay, back here we have what is honestly one of the most beautifully kept, uh, beautifully designed leather interiors that you're ever going to see. Uh, beautiful Palomino leather with the ventilation where you sit. Lovely fit and finish. Absolutely incredible. You have a little center console there to put your uh, arm on. You got these nice little nets in the back. And, uh, you know, being the short wheelbase car, you don't have 82 feet of legroom in front of the uh, back seat, but you've got enough. You've got enough for putting three guys back there and they're going to be just fine. And uh, what you gain from having having the short wheelbase is, is worth that. Uh, you know, you really do get a more nimble car. Uh, they went to this pleated leather uh, very late on. I want to say in uh, 1988 or 9. You don't get that in the earlier ones, and it's nice. It's very pretty. Uh, you know, the fit and finish of these uh, cars is just astounding. Look at the little screws holding in this little trim piece here. The chrome trim right there at the back of the door panel, the beautiful Zebrano wood, the switches, the chunkiness, this big chunky ashtray down there. Uh, again, they had a lot of pride in this car. It was, you know, something that they built for the chosen few, and uh, it really is to an incredible quality. Uh, even stuff like the door latches. Look at that big chunky chrome door. This is something from another vintage. Uh, big uh, striker here. The way that goes into an insulated uh, retainer. It's just beautifully engineered, this car. And uh, boy, are you rewarded when you close the door. That is one very solid thud. All right. Now, I didn't go over the VIN stickers, but uh, I'll give it a quick... Um, talk on every panel of this car which does have original paint you're going to find the VIN number is uh, etched in it's underneath these doors where I'm not going to bend down and get to uh, it's on the bottom of the hood the sides of the fenders the quarter panel the firewall and that was good for theft at the time you know if uh, somebody robbed one of these and took the parts off it you could you know couldn't easily sell them uh, today it's really good for collectability so when you're going over the car uh, you can make sure it has all those original VIN stickers they can't be duplicated, and that way you know you're getting a car that has, at the minimum, original sheet metal, uh, if not uh, what we know to be original paint on this car. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, driver's uh, side, uh, oh, forgive me, uh, <clears throat> door panel here. You've got, you know, this is, again, a lot of companies went to this seat-looking switch thing. Uh, Mercedes pioneered it. Uh, you've got your headrest control there. That was always cool to me, was the uh, power headrests. Uh, you can see the memory buttons. Uh, on cars that have been beat up or overused, these things are often faded away. You just white buttons. They don't look like anything. They don't see a one and a two. Uh, the door handles are sometimes loose and hanging down. Uh, everything is so nice and tight and together on this car. And if you have any doubt it was designed by engineers, here's a perfect, um, well, obviously every car is designed by engineers except maybe Citroens, but uh, it, I, when I say the engineers are in charge, you've got a manual driver's side uh, power, uh, sorry, uh, side view mirror, manual, 100% manual, and then you've got a power 
uh, electric side. And the reason uh, power electric side, I'm telling you, I'm just losing it today. You know, I need to get back on vacation again, take a few days off, unwind, get the flies and the birds out of my brain and keep going forward. Anyway, power passenger side mirror, manual driver side mirror, because it's logical. You're on the driver's side. You don't need to reach for something that's hard to find to adjust it. You can just very quickly get up here and put it how you want it. So nice stuff. Uh, here are these beautiful uh, lazy boy seats. I mean, truly the best seats in the business then or maybe even today. Uh, they're firm yet springy. Uh, you can see the springs in this one are nice and tight and proper. The Palomino leather is beautiful. All the trim around it in great shape. Uh, these beautiful over-engineered skid panels there where the carpet goes in. Uh, just absolutely lovely. Being a late 126, this has kind of the under dash panel. You see you get a little place to put stuff there. Uh, before I get in, you can see all the hieroglyphics on the switches are mint. Haven't been rubbed off by, um, you know, some jerk off of an owner. Same with the cruise control. Uh, you know, this is a truly beautiful original example of this car. <clears throat> right, let's fire it up. Get some AC going. All right, you hear that six fire right up, nice and smooth running. Get a little AC going. Now, the only complaint I would have had about this car at the time or today are the, uh, you know, the markings, the hieroglyphics. They're, uh, I remember it was really exotic to me as a kid to get in a Mercedes and see all the stuff that really didn't make a lot of sense. I mean, this could have been the controls on a nuclear submarine for all I knew. Uh, but, uh, you know, the logic of it does sort of sink in. Uh, anyway, you can see a very classically designed instrument cluster. Uh, when you see how orange it is, you see how the needles match the uh, the hieroglyphics behind it. Orange, 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 everything orange and nice. You know, on cars that have been sun-baked, sun-drenched, uh, that will all fade to yellow. The needles stop matching each other uh, and everything comes apart. So uh, you can just tell from looking at that that this car has had a very nice uh, life out of the sun and very well preserved. Uh, ditto the way there are no cracks at all in the dashboard. Of course, Germany's pretty cold and Mercedes are, you know, truly a cold weather car. So even though they do all the heat testing for their clients who live in, you know, hot parts of the country or the world, uh, it's still, you know, at the end of the day, you can't test 10 years in the Florida sun uh, what that's going to do to a dash. And as a result, you know, some of these cars that were kept outside in those brutal conditions, the, the dash is just all cracked like the Mojave Desert. Uh, anyway, you see just 103,000 miles on the clock of this thing. On a 126 like this, I would call that low miles. I wouldn't even call it average. I mean, these things can go hundreds of thousands of miles. They were a car that was a true luxury item in the sense that it was designed to be infinitely maintainable. Uh, this is not a car that had any planned obsolescence or, you know, a thought that it would wear out and be replaced. This is a car that they built to be serviced indefinitely, so something you could drive for theoretically a hundred years as long as the parts were still available. And uh, they have done a fantastic job with that, and so many of them still remain on the road today. Even the bad ones, a lot of them are still going because they're just hard to kill. Uh, you can see the beautiful way the Zebrano wood runs from the door panel into the dashboard all the way across there, uh, down into this climate control panel. Uh, you got your uh, rear defrost here, your recirculating air, your hazard switch, your power antenna, interior lights, I think the rear light. Uh, you can see on the roller, this gives us our temperature. I like that it's in Fahrenheit. Most of them are Celsius before. Sometimes these are all peeling off and nasty looking. They're just no good. Uh, this one is. It's great. You can see the uh, condition of it. No fading. Lovely. And it works. Uh, all the vacuum was serviced in this car. So when you put defrost on, it comes out defrost. When you put uh, dash on, it comes out the dash. It won't fog up your window in the morning. Uh, anyway, uh, the correct setting generally for these things, which are completely mystifying to me and most people, uh, is the center button. That's going to run it out of the dash. Uh, when you put it here, it's high and low. 
and uh, when you put it over here, uh, EC, that means it's coming out of the dash, but with the AC compressor off. Of course, zero means zero. Uh, one thing that's a little weird is that there's no way to direct it out to your feet. Um, you know, maybe that happens automatically. It's just something I never thought about. Uh, this does have the original uh, Mercedes-Benz Becker radio, again, with all the insane hieroglyphics. Uh, you know, you want to see that in there, even if it's not a very intuitive radio to use. But uh, if you see some kind of ridiculous Sony explode or you know some purple dancing thing you know the car was owned by nitwits uh, this thing never changed mint buttons look great you can just tell the guy who looked after this before he passed away uh, that this car was his pride and joy Let's see what we got playing no! was that white line no I don't know, doesn't matter. Anyway, nice guitars for an early morning. Uh, you got an ashtray here with clever little way the 12 volt pops up. You've got this beautiful this sort of uh, gated shifter that Mercedes really pioneered and now everybody uses. Uh, love the way it works. You've got a four speed automatic. Uh, if you go all the way down, and then click one down. You'll you'll move a little switch in the back here, and what that'll do is let the car start in first gear. Well, when you're in park and you go into drive, the thing is pretty much always going to start in second gear, and it does that for uh, a couple reasons: fuel economy for one, and for smoothness. So the car feels nice and smooth and lovely when it's coming off the line. Uh, anyway, nice stuff. You can see all the power windows. None of the hieroglyphics worn off. You've got your fader control for the radio. There's that uh, power mirror switch we were talking about. Because this is a late 126, it has the passenger side airbag, which is very nice. Ah, God. Got people calling me. It's nice that it no longer interrupts the video, so that's a plus for this camera. Uh, anyway, it has the passenger side airbag, which gives you this little under dash panel to put stuff, and uh, also then gives you the center console. Oh, where we've got a now broken piece of wood, which is not uncommon. I was just gonna talk about how fantastic it was. That was still intact, but uh, mostly intact. Looks good. Uh, I'll see if I can't find that piece and get it in there. But uh, beautiful. Beautiful Zebrano wood and nice to have that little locking compartment that replaces the glove box. Uh, what else can I show you? Everything nice over here. You've got these uh, vanity mirrors in great shape. They work good. Very, very nice stuff. They're not popping out. Who is so persistent? Let's see. This is going to have to be my sister. Yeah, of course it is. Okay, anyway. Let's uh, show you the uh, center. Uh, uh, you know what? There it is. The video comes on. You know, I'm doing it. I'm having fun. Aggressive people call me like three times. Oh, I didn't answer the first time. Maybe I'll answer immediately afterwards. Maybe if I call four times, I'll answer. Ah, oh, God, they should be put down. Anyway, I like this little guy here that uh, takes up this, you know, you're running down the road, the sun's coming in right above the mirror, and you're like, God damn, there's just no way to get the thing over there. Well, the engineers came up with that little guy, and it works great. All right, anyway, that one on, let's go for a drive. I didn't show you the sunroof, but we'll get that in a second. Look at the size of that sucker. Beautiful, giant big sunroof, working well, nice and smooth. All right, away we go. The driving is the best part of this 126, by far. It drives so much different and so much nicer than most other cars out there. And uh, you know what, it, it has this recirculating ball steering, which is incredibly smooth. It has, you know, the most incredible suspension that gives you tons of road feel while at the same time smoothing out the bumps in a lovely way. It steers heavy, you know, I mean, the car feels incredibly substantial and at the same time nimble. And, you know, these things were built so that Idi Amin could escape his Air Force. I mean, if they turned on him, they were coming after him. Uh, he'd have to run outside, probably in the V8 model, uh, you know, have his driver do real high performance stuff to get away from him. So, uh, you know, th that's the way these cars are built, all independent suspension and uh, just a lovely way to go down the road. All right, I'm 
winding it out a little bit. You can see that six cylinder does exactly what it's supposed to, moves the car down the road just fine. You know, obviously the eight's going to give you more torque and horsepower, but the six is more than adequate in this short wheelbase car. So you get to save a little bit of money on gas, and at the same time, you're not going to be hurting trying to merge onto the on ramp. Uh, you have that lovely uh, Mercedes star pointing the way, the beautiful creases in the hood. You just feel so elegant and, uh, you know, regal driving this thing around. It's just such a lovely feeling. And all the engineering around you, the beautiful uh, A-pillar covers there with the, uh, you know, this is the stuff they make the Hindenburg out of. So don't smoke. If you put a dash on that thing, it's going to go up like crazy. Uh, but uh, anyway, you know, you can just feel the remarkable fit and finish in every square inch of this car and it retains that today i mean i defy you to get it a 1990 you know chevy impala and feel that it's this tight and lovely and proper to drive it just isn't it just wasn't built to nearly the same quality Anyway, I could ramble on and on, but this is what I consider to be my favorite car. If I had to narrow it down, here it is. Late model facelift W126 300 SE short wheelbase Mercedes. If I could only own one car for the rest of my life, this would be it. If only they'd made it in a wagon form, then I'd be an absolute nirvana. But uh, this is the one I'd pick, so there's your answer. Uh, this one, fantastic machine, beautifully kept, came from an estate. The guy loved it up to the last minute of his life. 103,000 miles, garage since new, serviced fantastically since new, and uh, just a terrific car all around. So uh, if you have an interest, give us a call, 239-649-7300, on the web at mercedesexpert.com. Thanks so much for having a look. We really appreciate it.